Anti-Pope Francis just, quote, beatified John Paul I, the Vatican II anti-Pope who reigned for 33 days in 1978. This is more confirmation that we are totally correct that the Vatican II sect, its apostasy, and its anti-popes fulfill apocalyptic prophecy about the beast returning, that is, about pagan Rome returning in the last days, which causes shock, confusion, and wonder. Heck, what is going on? Anti-Pope John Paul I was an actual Roman king. He was one of the seven kings of the Vatican city-state, as we've explained. He also accepted the heresies and apostasy of Vatican II. With his so-called beatification, the Vatican II sect has now officially, quote, canonized or, quote, beatified every currently deceased Vatican II antipope, all of whom were also actual pagan Roman kings of the Vatican II sect and the Vatican city-state. That is, antipopes John XXIII through John Paul II. The reason that the Vatican II sect has quickly moved to honor these heretical and pagan Roman kings after their deaths is that in the Roman Empire, pagan Roman kings frequently had their images honored after death through a special ceremony. The Vatican II sect represents pagan Rome returned, that is, the beast coming back, but it brings pagan Rome back under the guise or under the deceptive appearance of the church by means of a counter-church that is led by antipopes, that is, the end times whore of Babylon. Hence, it tries to hijack the church's process to impose apostasy, unbelief, and paganism. This is the fulfillment of apocalyptic prophecy about the beast coming back, and this so-called beatification of anti-pope John Paul I is more confirmation that if you listen to our material, you will understand what's truly going on and what this Vatican II apostasy represents. We want to play a section from our video, Apocalypse Now in the Vatican, which explains how these post-Vatican II, quote, canonizations and, quote, beatifications of Roman kings of the Vatican city-state fulfill prophecy about the return of the beast. Also see our video, Did the Bible Predict 70 Years Without a Pope? The most significant example of the return of paganism to Rome is found in the religious indifferentism and heresies officially preached by the Vatican II antipopes and in the false doctrines of the Vatican II religion. Let's now consider another striking fulfillment of the prophecy about the return of the beast, that is pagan Rome, in our time. First, note that while Roman emperors were technically speaking emperors rather than kings, they were in reality kings. See for example John 19.15 where Tiberius Caesar, the Roman emperor at the time, is referred to as a king. There we read that people who called for Christ's crucifixion stated, We have no king but Caesar. Hence, Roman emperors were de facto Roman kings, and the honor given to the pagan Roman emperor and his image was honor given to a pagan Roman king. Now, in the pagan Roman Empire, emperor worship was practiced. In various ways, certain Roman emperors were treated as if they were divine. However, it's extremely important to note that in the capital itself, that is at Rome itself, in the official state cult, an emperor could only receive divine worship after he had died. This is crucial in understanding an aspect of what's happening in the Vatican now and how it fulfills prophecy about the return of the beast that was. Here are a few quotes on this point. In a commentary on the book of Revelation, Grant Osborne notes, quote, While the Greeks gave divine status to living rulers, the Romans traditionally did not declare their emperors gods until after their deaths. However, this was more the case in Rome itself, end quote. As Stephen Friesen says in a book on imperial cults in the Apocalypse of John, quote, The Roman diva system in which good emperors were divinized after death by vote of the Senate, end quote. Also, as Itai Gradel writes in Emperor Worship and Roman Religion, quote, Official policy in the state cult of the capital, where an emperor could receive divine worship only after he had died, end quote. Consider this carefully. It's extremely significant in understanding how the Vatican II sect fulfills prophecy about the beast. Although in the Roman Empire, certain living Roman emperors were at times given what was tantamount to divine honor in private or unofficial cults, in the official state cult at Rome itself, the emperors could not receive divine worship until they went through a special so-called deification ceremony after death. Let me repeat that. Pagan Rome, the beast that was, would quote deify pagan Roman kings in a special ceremony after their deaths. And only then could those deceased pagan Roman kings receive, in their view, a special spiritual status. Well, many have been shocked and wondering about the rather strange phenomenon that despite all of the scandals, evils, and bad fruits following Vatican II, John XXIII, Paul VI, and John Paul II have been, quote, canonized by the Vatican II sect all within a relatively short period of time, even though in the true Catholic Church only two popes in the past 500 years, Pius X and Pius V, were canonized. Because what we're seeing now, of course, is the canonization, not of individuals, but the canonization of the entire revolution of Vatican II. They're using canonization, the process of canonization, 
to make heroes of revolutionaries. Thomas More, John Fisher, Edmund Campion, all martyrs for the faith. It took 400 years for them to be canonized. And today, well, I remember Paul VI. When I was a kid, he was the Pope. It wasn't that long ago. They're just flying through these now, just pumping these guys out. Little, little, little saint-making factory. Well, when you recognize that what we're seeing is the return of pagan Rome, you will understand why this is happening. John XXIII, Paul VI, and John Paul II were literally pagan Roman kings of the Vatican city-state, as we've covered. They promoted wickedness, idolatry, and heresy. The Vatican II sect is the spiritual component of the end times beast. It is pagan Rome returned. So just as the pagan Roman Empire officially honored deceased pagan Roman kings and gave them a special title after death, so too the new version of the beast has moved to quote canonize all of the deceased antipopes, who were also pagan Roman kings, who played a significant role in the wicked Vatican II religion, with the exception thus far of John Paul I who reigned only for 33 days. That's why there has been this push to quote canonize these evil Vatican II antipope Roman kings. It's a clear fulfillment of the prophecy about the return of the beast that was pagan Rome. It shows that we are living through the time of the end times beast. Now let me be very clear, I am not saying that a true Catholic canonization is idolatrous at all, or that it means that the person canonized is regarded as divine. Of course not. A true canonization by a valid pope means that the saint is to be venerated or honored as a holy person in heaven, not that the saint is considered God or divine. But during the Great Apostasy, the End Times Beast and the Counter Church have taken possession of the Church's physical structures and occupied the Temple of God. Thus, they attempt to hijack the Church's process to impose evil and paganism. Consequently, the Beast conducts false canonizations for its own evil ends. False canonizations thereby become a means by which the End Times Beast causes people to honor wicked pagan Roman kings, just as the pagan Roman Empire at various times caused people to honor wicked pagan Roman kings. However, in the case of John Paul II, when people accept him as a saint, they are not only implicated in his general wickedness, heresies, and idolatry, but they actually endorse his claim that he and everyone else is God. That's because John Paul II officially and repeatedly preached that every man is God. To accept him as a saint, therefore, is to endorse the claim that a deceased pagan Roman king is God, exactly as it happened in the beast that was. That's why John Paul II is singled out in the apocalypse. That's why his wounding is mentioned. He is the image of pagan Rome. He introduced the World Historic Assisi prayer meeting, where the leaders of all the major false religions of the world were gathered together to pray for the first time. This matches precisely what is stated in 2 Thessalonians 2 about the man of sin being above and across from every so-called god or object of worship. For more on that, see our video, The Antichrist Identified. This is also why the altar at that idolatrous Assisi event, which is the most notorious event in the entire apostasy, had the word peace written on it. In the pagan Roman Empire, one of the most famous monuments was the Ara Pacis, which means the altar of peace. It was a pagan altar on which idolatry was conducted, dedicated to the name peace. And what do we see in the Vatican II counter church, which represents pagan Rome returned? The most famous or rather notorious event through which paganism and idolatry were introduced and conducted was the Assisi prayer meeting, which was the world day of prayer for peace. And at the very altar where the various false religions conducted their idolatrous worship, the word peace was written in various languages. That's not an accident. Assisi is the new Arapachis, it's the pagan altar of peace in the new version of the beast. And it was introduced by Antipope John Paul II, the sixth king, who represents the end times beast. It also makes sense that in the beast that was, ancient Rome, the Arapachis was at Rome, since their quote peace was found in their military strength centered in Rome. But in the new version of the beast, or the beast returned, which rose with John Paul II, the goal is to mock Christian peace. Saint Francis of Assisi is known as the saint of Christian peace. It therefore makes sense that the beast's new Arapachis would be in a town that is associated with Christian peace, Assisi. Now consider this. Herodian was a Greek historian born in AD 170 who wrote a famous partial history of the Roman Empire. He gives us some details about what they would do in the quote deification ceremony of Roman emperors after their deaths. He explains quote, it is the Roman custom to elevate to divine status those emperors who at their death leave sons or designated successors. They call this honor deification. A wax image is fashioned in the exact likeness of the corpse and placed on a large high couch end quote. He lists a number of other things associated with the ceremony. He explains that the couch containing the image of the deceased emperor would be carried out to the field. 
quote, where, in the widest part of the plain, a square building has been constructed entirely of huge wooden beams in the shape of a house. The whole interior of this building is filled with firewood, end quote. He explains that this building had a few stories. He goes on to say, quote, when these rites have been completed, the emperor's successor puts a torch to the structure, which contains the couch with the image of the emperor, after which the people set it on fire on all sides. The flames easily and quickly consume the enormous pile of firewood and fragrant stuffs, end quote. So basically what they would do in this, quote, deification ceremony of the deceased pagan Roman king is light the image of the pagan king up in a bonfire. Well, what do you know? On April 2nd, 2007, during a ceremony that specifically marked the two-year anniversary of John Paul II's death, John Paul II's image or silhouette was seen in a bonfire in Poland. This made international headlines. These are images that everyone is talking about this morning. The late Pope John Paul II, as you know, left an indelible mark on the world's Catholics, especially those in his beloved native land of Poland. And now some are claiming that he is reaching out to them once more. CBS News correspondent Sheila McVicker reports. A familiar, iconic image. The bonfire was in Poland, the Pope's home, on the second anniversary of his death last April. Broadcast by Vatican TV, posted on religious websites, the faithful are reported to be logging on to make their own judgments. A Polish priest and close friend of the former pontiff has declared that he too sees an image of a person and believes it to be the Pope. John Paul II's image was seen lit up in a bonfire, just as they would light up the image of the deceased pagan Roman king in a bonfire during the, quote, deification ceremony, precisely because the beast returned with him, just as we have said. This is another clear fulfillment of the prophecy about the return of the beast that was. 